Hello my Soccer Universe, for a quick review of match day 2 of the group stage at the Copa America this year. It is still all very Eurocentric in the background there, but I found some American shirts of course to give us the impression that we have a Copa America review here. Yeah, I will have to do better next time around, but you know the Euros take precedence over the Copa America for me because I can watch them. The Copa America is in the middle of the night, that's not realistic for me to watch. So. If I reveal any gaps here, if you see something different than what I've observed here, please leave a comment below and update me there as well. Correct me if you will like. In this video, we look at my rough observations for the group stage match day two so far. Then we look at a quick summary of all these games where I just make a collage out of the short videos that I had made. Then we look at the standings and at the games that we have to look forward to at match day three. Observations. I think the level of play has definitely picked up. Goal scoring has picked up. We are now par with the Euros and the Euros actually went downhill. I think this is due to the format, which not only we don't have third place teams advancing, so it's the top two, so you actually have to pull in the performance, especially on match day two as well. But also that the first tiebreaker is goal difference instead of the head to head, which I also think is slightly better, although it's a little bit ridiculous as well, but it encourages you to run up the score. Goal scoring is definitely there, which then also adds to the second observation that I have that the three co-favorites, you know, Argentina is the huge favorite as world champions, you know, and having a relatively cushy draw and everything so on, and still having Messi in good form. They are the big favorites, but the three co-favorites have put in big score lines. And I definitely want to mention Uruguay because you will not hear much of them in the summary of the games. Uruguay putting five past Bolivia. Yes, Bolivia is the worst team in the entire tournament, but the United States only managed two. Uruguay put in five. High energy Bielsa style. Watch out for Uruguay. I'm actually starting to ride really high on them. They may do some damage in there, but I equally like Colombia, who again, yeah, Costa Rica, maybe not the best team. And Colombia was struggling a little bit against Paraguay before they got the goals. The way that this game went, a draw would have been probably a little bit more representative. But Colombia actually put in a good performance and you know they have Luis Diaz, they have James Rodriguez up front. There's also a really high in energy side that is unbeaten for quite a long time and we have to see what they do against Brazil. A Brazil team that finally scores goals and it took a while, it took even this penalty but then Brazil got it going and if Brazil can get something going this is a dangerous side. I still like Uruguay more, I'm just saying it out loud. And then the third observation is all CONCACAF related. We had our first real upsets there and they all involved CONCACAF teams. First, the positive on Canada, the team that I'm wearing, beating Peru. Yes, it's an old Peru side, the one that is on the end of a cycle that culminated in qualifying for the World Cup in 2018 and just missing out due to the penalty shootout on the World Cup in Qatar where they probably should have qualified. But this Peru team is definitely on a downturn. It was a smash and grab for Canada, one also has to say, but it is really good. The one thing I have to apologize already in advance when you see now the summaries of the games, you will see me calling Canada potentially the Austria of the Copa America, not quite. Yes, with Jesse Marsh, they have a Red Bull style coach, but Canada is not doing that. They just launched a counterattack that well, Jonathan David, I think, finished very nicely. And that's how they beat Peru without being so dominant like Austria. So take that with a little bit of salt, but there's the potential there for Canada. But the negative ones is of course, Mexico, the team that probably has the highest level of support within the United States, curiously. Yes, they're not in a good stage and yes, losing to Venezuela deservedly so puts them already at risk of not qualifying. So not looking good for Mexico and even worse for the United States. I mean, a completely self-inflicted loss. Absolutely stupid. There have to be questions asked. Why does Timothy Weyer get the red card? Also questions have to ask of the coaching staff. What did you do? Why did you take out all the attacking power? Why did you want to see all the other draw? Because you see the possession to Panama. A lot of things not working for the S and they might well find themselves on the way out in their home tournament ahead of a World Cup and Berhalt is of course under serious pressure already. But yes, let's summarize quickly what happened in on match day two and I'll see you on the other side of the little collage.
So we had arguably a first real shock at the Copa America with Canada beating Peru 1-0 despite Peru controlling most of the first half creating more chances Canada being more on defensive however it all changed when Arujo in the 59th minute got a red card for a rather rough tackle and then Canada could hit them on the counter and so Jonathan David did so with the winning goal coming in the 74th minute is Canada a little bit like Austria at the Euros? Maybe not quite, but you know, you see the parallels. In the other game, which was a classic between Argentina and Chile, played in New York, Argentina completely dominated proceedings. However, also missed quite a few chances, most notably a really nice shot by Messi, just kissed the outside of the post. There were multiple ones more. Chile only had a solitary chance that got saved by Emmy Martinez. It's laid on the Lautaro Martinez converts. He probably should have made it a second one, but he was too careless with this chance but yeah Argentina is still flawless and it's still not many goals. The surprise side at this year's Copa America is undoubtedly Venezuela already qualified for the quarterfinals the second team after Argentina to do so by beating Mexico 1-0. However it was not a straightforward win because Mexico had quite as good chances early on it's 0-0 at the half then Salomon Rodon puts Venezuela ahead with a hands penalty. Mexico though have the chance to equalize also through a hands penalty. However, the effort is saved by the Venezuelan goalkeeper and so Venezuela hang on for a famous win. They're most likely group winners and might avoid Argentina in the quarterfinals at least. In the other game, Ecuador then beat Jamaica 3-1. Relatively easy win, especially on the base of the first half. In the end, it needed a stoppage time goal for the win to be sealed, which means now that Mexico and Ecuador have a straight shootout on who will qualify in the second spot in Group B. The United States suffered one of the most damning defeats in recent tournament history, being beaten by fellow Concord side Panama 2-1. It was all self-inflicted, because despite them having more of the game early on with a West mechanic goal being ruled out, it is Timothy Vea who boxes an opponent and is sent off. Still, Balogun gives the United States the lead with an absolute peach of a goal, fitting to Atlanta where the game was played. However, very quickly thereafter, Blackman equalizes. Then they decide to go defensively, take everything out of the attack and see it out. Panama has all the possession and despite Pepe having a great chance to maybe take the lead again, in the end it is Fajardo who gives Panama the lead. However, Panama also go down to 10 men because Carrasquillo makes such a tackle on Christian Pulisic that just had to get a red card. In the same group, Marcelo Bielsa's Uruguay really underlined that they might actually be a contender beating Bolivia 5-0. Full attack, goal difference, all in, in their favor. They really, really, really look strong. So on the second match day of Group D, we saw two very lopsided results. First of Colombia beating Costa Rica 3-0. They racked up the pressure in the first half. It takes on a penalty that Luis Diaz emphatically converts to make it 1-0 at the half. And then in the second half, it's a double at the half. Our Mark Davinson Sanchez has in Arias corner. And then James Rodriguez assists with a brilliant pass. Uh, Cordoba to make it 3-0. Colombia through to the next round already. And then Brazil do kind of the same. Although against the Spirit of Paraguay for half an hour, nothing really worked there also has, as we said, Paqueta even missing a penalty. However, then a brilliant attacking move sees Vinny Jr. give Brazil the lead. Then they score some two awful goals based on defensive error by Paraguay. Yes, Paraguay pull one back, but then Paqueta makes up for his penalty miss, makes it 4-1. There's also a red card for a Paraguayan who just, you know, lose the nerves. And with that result, Brazil not mathematically through, but de facto. So if you look now at the projections, you see Group A, Argentina is already through. And yes, we have also a calf injury from Messi, which might play into it. I hope he will get fit and probably for the latter stages of the tournament. As we'll see, Argentina still have a very cushy draw. So even if he has to wait for the semifinal, Argentina will make it through to that one. Canada just ahead of Chile. Yes, they have to avoid defeat there, but I actually like Canada's chances there. Then Group B. Venezuela are through already because we have a head to head between Mexico and Ecuador where Mexico is just about ahead of Ecuador but just about. I actually can see Ecuador beating Mexico quite easily as far as I know they only need a draw so you know doesn't look good for Mexico. The United States yeah on the outside looking in against Panama they have to play Uruguay Eee, that's not good although Uruguay 
while mathematically not through, are more or less through thanks to the goal difference. So maybe they will rest some players and that might give them a chance. And in Group D, Colombia is through the next round. Brazil, thanks to the goal difference, also more or less through because I don't see Costa Rica reversing that one. And Colombia, while they're in great form, they will not run riot over Brazil most likely. That will set up the following bracket. At the moment, Argentina against Mexico. There are a whole lot of memories attached to that one. I only see one winner there. Even without Messi, Argentina should win that one easily. And then we have an outside duel between Venezuela and Canada. And yeah, Venezuela would be the favorite there meeting Argentina. That might be a little bit tighter because this Venezuela team is actually quite good. But still, you would expect Argentina in the final because they're not facing any of the other major favorites there. Uruguay, Brazil. If Brazil really should finish second, boy, is that a matchup. There's so much history there. I can see Uruguay beating Brazil. At the moment, Uruguay is in a real good form. And with Marcelo Bielsa, of course, they play also very excitingly. West Colombia will probably cruise against Panama. My model still is Brazil ahead of Uruguay. <laughs> They would meet Colombia in a semifinal, another game that I see very, very tight and the rematch of the group stage. So we'll see just by the model and by all the ratings, Argentina and Brazil should meet in the final. That's what everyone wants to see. I'm not sure if we will get it, but also Venezuela against Colombia in the third place playoff. That is interesting because there's a rivalry between those two. So as for the overall favorites, of course, with the cushy bracket, Argentina very much the favorites out of Brazil, Colombia and Uruguay. And I think the list of the teams that can take home the Copa America ends right there. Venezuela would already be kind of a big story if they even would get to the final, I would say. I don't see them winning it. As for match day three, we have a few dead rubbers in the Argentina. Peru is one of those. Canada against Chile, that's a straight shooter. Yes, th theoretically, Peru, if they beat Argentina, they still have a chance, but it's a very outside chance because it also will go down to goal difference most likely. Jamaica, Venezuela is a dead rubber, but Mexico against Ecuador, that's all to play for. Maybe the Arizona crowd will lift Mexico and they get the win that they will need. Ecuador, a draw is enough. And then for Group C, it is very easy. The United States need to match or better the result that Panama get against Bolivia. Now, Panama will probably not put a whole lot past Bolivia, but I think they will beat Bolivia. And then the United States will need to beat Uruguay. And again, you need to hope that they're saving some players, blah, blah, blah. So not looking good. And then Brazil against Colombia is more or less a shootout for the first place. Brazil need to win. If you want to avoid Uruguay in the quarters, you better win this one. As a goal difference, I don't see Costa Rica putting a lot of goals past Paraguay. I actually see Paraguay winning this one because Paraguay have been a very spirited side where only the way that the matches went mean that they're already eliminated but i would favor paraguay over costa rica and that's why i think brazil are more or less through so yeah these are my thoughts on the copa america please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video please add a comment if you want to correct me or add anything that i have missed i will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.